Man, so there's literally been a lot of stuff going on. I appreciate everybody that's tuning in right now. If it's your first time on my YouTube channel, do me a favor, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, hit the notification bell. And if you haven't already, check out my most recent podcast I literally just dropped. Okay, and we're going to talk about a lot of these hot topics. But right now, I'm giving you guys an update on a series of hot topics, including Megan Thee Stallion, uh, Drea from Basketball Wives being, fe uh, being fired uh, by Rihanna, and a ton of other things that's been going on in the media so let's talk about it um we're going to talk about the Megan Thee Stallion situation because it's basically everything has come to a head and a basically semi-conclusion um since her being shot okay I know a lot of you guys know about that allegedly she was hanging out with rapper Tory Lanez at Kylie Jenner's house party and they got in a car an altercation allegedly ensued and it led to Tory Lanez allegedly I'm gonna keep saying allegedly all right shooting uh Megan Thee Stallion in the foot and, and she basically was taken to the hospital okay at first they were saying she had glass in her foot Tori was arrested for gun possession blah 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 but then eventually it came out that she was shot because Megan went on Instagram and said that she was shot and basically she was basically a victim and, be, and someone was actually trying to harm her and it set the entire internet ablaze now okay after a couple of weeks, you know, Megan had the chance to heal. A lot of speculation was being put out by these blogs and podcasts and everything else. People allegedly having sources and giving out a bunch of tea that hasn't yet been confirmed, okay? Um, and Megan never actually spoke fully up about it. She basically just said that she felt like black women are unprotected and a slew of other things, okay? Um, along with that, all these other celebrities, jerks like 50 Cent was making jokes about her goofies like uh drea michelle who just lost her freaking endorsement uh with rihanna's brand uh savage fenty decided to make jokes about the situation and it's just been a bunch of crap going on around the whole thing and then of course adam 22 decided to put his two sits in and say that the real reason that this whole thing happened with tori was because uh, Megan, I don't know, probably laid hands on him or some other crazy stuff. Well, Megan finally silenced everybody when she went on Instagram and flat out just said, listen, I was shot in both of my feet. I didn't deserve what happened to me. You know, she tried to express, you know, she was teary eyed. You know, she expressed the fact that she lost both. She has lost both of her parents. She's only 25 in the industry by herself. She's basically admitting that she's hanging around with the wrong people. You know, she's hung around with the wrong people. And this happened to be the end results of her hanging out with the wrong people. And she's just grateful to God. And she felt like her parents were watching over her. Um, that luckily she didn't have any broken tendons. It didn't hit a major artery or a vein or anything like that. And she was able to get through this situation now people are still speculation speculating will you know tory lanes be convicted now you know we know that he's in trouble for gun for gun possession people have even made petitions trying to get this man shipped back to canada because most of you guys don't know tory lanes isn't from the united states he's actually from canada i think he's from like toronto and he already had a lot of other criminal cases pending and this is basically like the icing on the cake so a lot of people that are you know um what is, what is her um, fan's name? Whatever. Megan Thee Stallion fans or whatever. Um, and a lot of other people have been signing a petition trying to get this dude shipped up out of here because it's just like, dude, what you did was not cool. You know what I mean? Um, you out here shooting women in the foot allegedly because, you know, I don't know. Whatever the argument was, um, whether she didn't want to be with you, whether she caught you cheating or whatever the situation is, you are a punk and any man that would even lay a hand on a woman is a punk. But the fact that you will possibly, you know, risk her life by shooting her in her in her feet or wherever, just shooting her, period, you are just like literally the scum of the earth. And you need to go back to wherever you need, you've you been, you know what I'm saying, where you're from. Um, and, and get your mind right, bro, because it's just like, it's just real tacky. But anyway, um, yeah, so she basically came on and basically was saying that, um, you know, she was just very sad about the entire situation emotional and she also said that she was not trying to protect him or protect anybody you know what i'm saying but she still can't say certain things now what i get from it is is it possibly it is a legal matter so maybe her lawyers or attorneys is telling megan that hey you can't say certain things because this situation is going to go to court or whatever whatever and that's how it is sometimes like you can't say certain things um in front of everybody while there's an pending investigation or you have an attorney you have legal representation there's certain things that you can't say on the web so she is going to continue to go around the question if she's actually possibly pursuing charges you know it's either that 
or she just feel like you know I'm, I'm supposed to protect or just not snitch which would, would to me wouldn't make sense I mean he could have killed her and you know that's when the oh don't snitch stuff goes out the window you like you shooting this uh, beautiful black woman is pop superstar over basically nothing you know you could have possibly uh, the bullet could have ricocheted could have went the wrong way could have killed her and you know I just hope that um you know anyone that everyone that was involved in the situation you know justice is brought you know um the charges is brought to them and justice is served because she didn't deserve this I don't care what the story is I don't care whatever because I feel like even with um these bloggers out here talking which would be one of them me being one of them and stuff like that um a lot of them is just trying to make it seem like what Tory Lanez did was justifiable you know trying to make out weird stories like oh she's bigger than him this this and this like what generation like what 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 is going on with this generation like for real like and, and it's just like it, it really just bothered me but I am glad that she was able to come on and say what she needs to say and if you guys haven't seen the full video I do got the full video on my channel um, you can you know, just click below, whatever, go through my entire, um, spread right there, videos, and you'll see her. It's basically, like, right under this video. So, um, you can see exactly what Megan Thee Stallion had to say. But I'm happy that she's okay. I'm happy that she can still walk. She might have, probably have a couple of scars. But besides that, we're glad that she would still be able to function and, you know, do what she likes to do. is to dance and perform and do what she likes to do. Now, going off of that, let's talk about Drea <laughs> from Basketball Wise. Losing her endorsement uh, with Savage Fenty. Now, you know, Drea Michelle from Basketball Wives decided she wanted to make a joke or a mockery of Megan Thee Stallion. Okay? And we're going to have to talk about Just Hilarious, too. Make, trying to make a mockery. I don't know what's going on with these females. Like, what's up with these black females out here, right? Are, are, like, we already have it rough as it is. Just being black and women and just, just being black and being female is just enough. Okay? And it's like... I could see a few of the black dudes or just people in general, men not understanding or making a joke out of it. But when you're seeing fellow black females or, you know, women of color making jokes about a domestic violence situation or it, it, any woman making a joke about a domestic violence situation, it just made me wonder, like, what what is wrong? Like, what makes you tick? Like, are you sick? Like, what's wrong with you? Like, ain't nothing funny about this. You know what I'm saying? But let's get to talking about Dre. So Dre basically got fired. Rihanna said you fired. Pulled the rug from underneath her. She's not endorsing the brand anymore. Savage Fenty had unfollowed her. Dre had unfollowed Savage Fenty. She put up some weird, um, I mean, some weird Instagram tweet trying to make a joke about it. I mean, like, basically made a weird Instagram tweet about it, trying to make a light, I guess trying to make a light of the situation, basically talking about some new opportunities coming or whatever, whatever. Um, you know, but it's just like, you can tell that she probably felt like a oopsie because she did try to backtrack what she said and try to you know, do damage control before she actually got fired, but she did end up losing her endorsement deal. So it's just like, you know, this is a lesson for a lot of people that's out there that's famous. You got to watch the things that you say, you know, you got to watch the things that you say, how you say, and especially in sensitive times like these and regarding sensitive subjects such as domestic violence and things of that nature. Like there's nothing to joke about when it comes to a woman being shot by her partner or any domestic violence situation in general that could lead to somebody losing their life or, you know, just being, you know, permanently injured and having their entire life altered because someone else can't control their temper. Um, and then that leads from me talking about Just Hilarious. Now, I watch her short videos that's on IG. You know, I can uh, appreciate a laugh or two from this chick, but it's like she tried to put together a skit about the Tory Lane and Megan Thee Stallion incident. But to me, it wasn't even funny. Now, scratch all the insensitiveness, right? Because, like, me, I'm going to give it to the equal. Like, I already told, called out 50 Cent. Let me be clear. I'm not saying these things just because they're females. Because a lot of people, they only give it to the females and they don't give it to the men that, that do dumb stuff. 50 Cent is still a scumbag to me. Even though he apologized to Megan Thee Stallion the other day after she did the video, he's still a scumbag because, like, yeah, he just, that's just what it is. But, like, just hilarious. I just didn't see the hilariousness of that video. It wasn't funny. Like, she put up a video on Instagram. I think the video is still up. And, you know, she's trying to make a joke out of it. Basically trying to do, like, some unsolved mysteries. Like, oh, this is what happened. This is how the person shot. And this, this, and this. But, like, it wasn't even the fact that she was uh, making light of a domestic violence situation. It's just the fact that it just wasn't funny. Like, if you're going to try to take on something like that where you're going to cause all this controversy, make it funny. Make me laugh. Make me fall on my ass. 
you know what I'm saying? It, to me, it just wasn't hilarious. Like, you just, to me, she missed the mark on that. I don't know where she was going with that. But that was a bad subject. Like, I mean, that was a bad subject to try to make funny. And the fact that it's already a video of Megan out flowing around on her basically crying about being shot. And then you also just, like, add on to the injury by, like, throwing out this video of you trying to make a joke about the crime. It's just, like... I mean, damn. Could you wait at least, like, maybe six months to a year after everything done cooled over? I don't know. Like, but the video just wasn't funny. It wasn't funny. You know what I mean? And I don't know what's going on with this domestic violence culture. A lot of stuff is coming forward in regards to um, just black women in general um, dealing with domestic violence. And, um, you know, all of the theatrics aside, you know, it's, it's very much uh elephant in a room in the black community in regards to black women dealing with domestic violence at the hands of their male partners and you know oftentimes it's swept under the rug you know and it's it, it has to do with our culture like we have a no snitch culture we have a, a a thing where we try to protect the men because of the uh pro police brutality and things like that that goes on so a lot of this stuff goes unreported until the male decides to actually kill the female and then it's on the news and everything else you know what i mean so this stuff is really serious and it really doesn't discriminate no matter how uh famous or rich a female may be it might actually be worse for them because a lot of times they, they end up dating men that's beneath them with low self-esteem that leads them to do even more scumbaggish stuff like choking them out on national TV. Now let's talk about Tahiri, and I'm talking about that, okay? Her her boyfriend or whatever, Vadu. I was just disgusted to see this on Marriage Boot Camp. And it's not on Wee TV too. Like, I hate the Wee TV network. Okay, like We TV need to be called Trash TV. Because they're all I believe it is Wee TV that plays the show. They're always putting up shows and stuff like that that basically makes black people look like clowns and look like stupid idiots and you know it's just really messed up watching the clip of Tahiri with her her boyfriend because a lot of them on marriage boot camp ain't even married so that's even more embarrassing we got all these black people together and you know that our marriage rate is like probably like 20 percent and you got all of the people that's supposed to be married but they're not really married and then on top of that you're going to show the man that's in a relationship, this black man with this woman that's in a relationship choking a, a, another, this black woman out on TV. It's just like, hmm. It's just really just bothers me. And like, you know, we seen the, I seen the clip on the shade room or whatever. And I was sitting there looking like, what in the hell? You, the thing that made me even more, that made me cringe even more seeing him like try to choke her out was the fact that all of these men were in the room Watching this man just jump on this female like he was about to like choke the life like he wanted to choke the life out of this woman Okay, and not one of them stood up to be like yo chill out until the doctor came in and yanked him out I'm just like have men become this punk like is it really like are black women or just you know women of color in general really this Unprotected, you know what I mean? Um, when did this become okay? You know because I personally was raised to believe that if a male is attacking a female and there are several other males there they're supposed to pull that man off of that female or whoop his ass or something because she literally was talking about it expressing her feelings towards this dude you know whether it be good or bad but his action did not match what she was saying and and it was just unjustifiable and you know you know tahiri would decided to go on uh, social media and put a post on it discussing the situation you know she kind of like try to belittle the whole situation to me with what she said um and you know it's sad it's real sad that so many women are out here getting used to being abused and it's just like you know she basically was saying that she's on camera for you know she, she has to take the good with the bad with her living and being a reality tv star but baby that's embarrassing and it's not only embarrassing for Sahiri, but that man or whatever you want to call him, um, the dude that did that, he should be ashamed of himself. Like, dude, you need some help. Like, for real. And, and at your age, I'm pretty sure you got to be like 30-something, almost 40-something. 
there should be not one thing a woman can really say to have you jump up and really about to choke the life out of her. And it's supposed to be your girlfriend, your fiance, whatever you are. Like, it's just like the disrespect is just uttered, ugh, all right? And I'm just, me personally, I'm just tired of seeing it. It's just like, dude, like, you know, come on now. <laughs> like, it, come on. Like, we got to do better. Like, for real, for real. And, you know, all the women that's out there that's in the domestic violence situation, I know that's tough. You know, sometimes you get stuck for finances, but these are people that have the wealth and the means to be able to take care of themselves and get out of the situation. So if you do have that, get out, man. Get out because you never know, like, that one blow might be the blow that kills you. You know, that one temper flare-up might be the one thing that, that makes him decide to get a gun or a knife or, and kill you, stab you, shoot you. You know what I'm saying? Just do some more off-the-wall stuff and have your children running around with no mommy because they ain't got no temper. You know what I mean? Because of their temper. They can't control their temper. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like that whole thing just set me back and it just made me sit there and think like, bro, like, are you kidding me? Now, speaking of, I said marriage boot camp is on WeTV. And of course, everybody on marriage boot camp ain't married. That just shows the production work of WeTV. Like, make it make sense. You know what I'm saying? But WeTV <laughs> decided to release a statement saying that they're going to let Tamar Braxton out of her contract. But they're not letting her out of her contract scot-free now. They're still about to cash in and release this one season of her episode, okay, of her show that's supposed to be premiering. And they pushed the, the episode back because it was supposed to premiere this past week or something, but they pushed it back to September. Now, Tamar Braxton, of course, she um, made it through her comatose that she was in after she allegedly tried to take her life. Still sending, up, sending prayers to her. She's going through something, okay? She went on Instagram the other day, put up a lengthy, long post. It's too long for me to read. Um, if you guys want to see it, you know, I suggest you guys go to her page or whatever, um, you know, and, and read it. Um, but she basically was just talking about the importance of mental health. She talked about um, when she did try to uh, commit suicide and, and harm herself, she wasn't thinking about her son because she was so wrapped up in the drama and the craziness, um, you know, that was in her life and in her head because of this network, basically trying to have her hostage as a slave, you know what I mean? And to hear that, you know what I'm saying? It's just really, really heartbreaking. It's like, to me, it's just really sad that that would happen to her, you know what I mean? And, you know, it's, it t it's a damn shame that this network decided to oblige by oblige with her and release her only after she tried to kill herself really like it took her to want to like kill herself and everything else for y'all to be like okay maybe we've taken things too far and you know the fact is that i just feel like we need to really just move forward and boycott these people because it's like y'all are literally just just sucking the life out of black people making us look like making us look like mockery making a mockery out of us making us look like a bunch of clowns um and don't you know y'all pimped her basically like y'all y'all said okay well we gonna let you go but first what we gonna do is get our money and then we gonna send you about our way that is some pimp street type stuff if i, if I don't know one okay and on top of that y'all just got chicks on there on we tv just you know getting choked out by their boyfriends and stuff look i can't mess with we tv if i was y'all i would boycott we tv that's how i feel and we got a boy and it's like listen i don't know what the financial situation is with tamar I love Tamar. I want to support Tamar. I will buy her records, but I don't want to. I don't want to watch her show. And the reason why is because I feel like it's going to cause mental turmoil for her just to know that that all her business is out there like that. And on top of that, we're basically going to be giving these people at this network money for this woman's pain. And I, I don't agree with that. So I just feel like everybody that's out there, if you are a real Tamar uh, fan, a supporter. Or even as a supporter of black women and, and you know what I mean, against like domestic violence or supporting or airing domestic violence of black women and making a mockery. Um, Y'all need to definitely check that out and um, check it out and uh, boycott them. You know, put up put up some type of petition uh, to prevent this show from airing. Something, y'all, because we can't just keep supporting networks that treat our people like crap just for a contract. Like, it's just not a good look. You know what I'm saying? I'm not sure what the whole, you know, legalities, whatever the hell you want to call it, or the legal issues and stuff like that is going on behind the scenes that's preventing it. But, I mean, clearly, they could have been with this woman out of her contract. It literally took her basically dying and coming back 
for them to decide to release her like to me that is bogus that's bs and we don't need to support networks like that we need to like really stop watching networks that basically don't care about people that we support you know what i mean and don't care about the safety of black women it's just a bunch of coonery a bunch of bs and i'm just i'm not feeling it i'm not feeling it and um yeah that's how i feel about that and leading over to the next thing let's talk about crazy ellen degeneres show is about to be canceled allegedly now from the daily mail they're basically saying that ellen degeneres is upset okay because you know she got like this whole situation investigation going on with her show because the black folks is claiming that they've been being discriminated against been talked too crazy but people on her staff have been fired just because they had to attend funerals um they needed to take health uh health breaks vacations mental breaks and stuff like that and they've come back and they didn't have a job you know it's just been a lot of funky stuff going on in the ellen show and also you know allegedly all right i'm gonna say allegedly this is all alleged but it, this stuff has been being put out like literally since the beginning of this year. Like the past six months of this year, I've been hearing bad things about Ellen's shows. And I, you know, I watched the Ellen show. You know, I'm pretty sure most of us out here watched the Ellen show. Most of us out here watched the Ellen show in some form or fashion or seen it or even seen her stand up comedy on Netflix or whatever. And, um, you know, been huge supporters because the energy that she brings to the TV, it makes you feel like, yo, this is, she seemed like a happy person. She seemed like somebody who wants to be around people. She enjoys her, you know, her fans and, and, you know, the people that surround her. But allegedly, according to them, that's not the case. And it's all just a show. You know what I mean? And she's just acting and, um, she basically, you know, would fire people for talking to her. You know, if you ever went over to her allegedly or to the main executives with complaints, they would fire you instead of resolving the issue. They would just find another replacement and try to sweep the whole thing under the rug. And unfortunately, everything that's gone on in the dark is now coming to light. And it's about to go down, y'all. You know what I'm saying? They're saying that um, Warner is over here doing an investigation on her. Um, you know, a lot of stuff is about to be happening. Maybe some possible lawsuits. And now at this point, Ellen did come out with a statement um, apologizing, saying that she was stunned, that she didn't know that these things were going on behind her back while working there. You know, but everybody else that's making these allegations being saying that, you know, Ellen allegedly knew about all this and she just didn't care. You know what I mean? She just would let anything go and she had like basically favoritism to certain executives and just let them do whatever they wanted. And basically if they had any complaints, Ellen would okay for them to get fired allegedly. So it's just like, what's the future of the Ellen show? They said the contract supposed to renew all the way into 2022. But at this point, they're saying allegedly behind the scenes, Ellen DeGeneres is basically trying to back out of the entire thing because she wants to save her brand and her reputation. And it's like, is it like too late for that? Do y'all think that's too late for her to be able to fix her brand and her reputation? Do It, it, does, it makes her kind of look guilty, right? Canceling an entire show because of some allegations. If anything, I just feel like she should repair the situation, face the allegation head on. Actually, instead of putting out a written statement, do like a direct verbal statement and talk to these viewers and these people that support you and tell us what's up. Like, and you know, what's going on? Is it really racial discrimination going on in your workplace? And if it's so, why? Why did it happen? You know what I'm saying? And why won't you take full responsibility for it? Because you are the brand. You're the face of the brand. See, sometimes when people around you do some funky things and you're the leader, you got to take full responsibility for that. And I feel like um, the statement that she put out, she only was taking partial responsibility and she wasn't taking full responsibility. You know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, we just going to see what exactly happens. Um, in the next upcoming days or whatever in regards to um, the Ellen show, um, this entire investigation. Um, I don't know if maybe she felt like if she canceled the show, they will stop the investigation or whatever. But I, I really, it's just a shame. It's a shame because the Ellen show been on for almost like 20 years now. You know, it's been definitely a landmark and a historic show um, for, for pop culture and the stuff that she did and um, the things that she did after she was being discriminated against herself, you know, that's even what makes it more ironic is because, you know, she came out the closet back in the 90s. She wasn't feeling it. People sending her death threats. She basically lost her entire career. And then she's able to revise her career, you know. And it's the fact that you are like someone who has uh, experienced discrimination in your career. Like, I am just ashamed to hear that you were discriminated against black people allegedly and or allow your staff to discriminate against people of, of, of black culture um on, on your show man so i hope that everything is resolved in regards to that and everybody gets what they what they need from the situation they find a resolution to that situation because it just don't look good it don't look good and by the way 
everybody that's watching me right now i appreciate y'all for tuning in of course um do me a favor if you haven't already on youtube hit the subscribe button hit the like button and hit the notification bell okay um you know of course i work very hard to build this platform and i just need y'all i'm seeing that it's about 80 percent 90 percent of the people that's tuning in y'all just come and watch the dang show but y'all don't hit that subscribe button so Come on, join the community. Why not? Y'all coming back here anyway. Y'all might as well get alerted immediately when I drop a new video. Um, so just do me a favor. Make sure you guys follow that and hit the subscribe button. Man, that's, that's all I'm asking. Hit the subscribe button. Please, please hit the subscribe button. Okay, do it for you, girl. Um, also, I got another podcast I just put out discussing most of these hot topics. Um, so if you haven't already heard it, go to Spotify, download it. I'm on Apple Podcasts. You can download it there. You can also listen on Pan, uh, Pandora. I just got to sip it on Pandora. And the numbers on Pandora is doing good, uh, real good. So I appreciate everybody for checking me out there. And I'm on a lot of other places too. Tune in, iHeart. It's just so many ways that you can listen to this podcast, the audio version of my podcast or whatever. Um, and I hope that you guys give it a chance, man. So I'm about to get up off of here. Man, there's so much other things. I think that's pretty much everything I wanted to discuss. Um... Yeah, I think that's everything. So, I, I will see you guys on the next video. I'm going to put this bad boy up. Um, if you haven't already shared the other videos, follow me on all social media at the DJ Jerica Podcast at DJ Jerica. Much love. Peace. I bet you remember. 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 Do you remember when we fell in love? We were young and innocent.